Hello, and today I'm going to be going over some handstand tips and hacks. It's been a few weeks since I put out the progression video on how to get your handstand and handstand push-up at the same time. And uh, so many of you guys have uh, shared your progress with me and uh, tagged me in your videos. And from it, I've learned a tremendous amount from you guys. So there's so much more I want to add to the techniques. Thanks to you guys. I've learned so much thanks to you. So... Uh, Anyway, as usual, this will be podcast format. I'll just be, uh, you know, babbling, giving you guys as much information as possible. Just try to follow along visually. This is just a uh, an extra core exercise to just practice getting getting the strength to get those hips over your shoulders. Um, the parallettes you see me using there, I hand make those myself, and I want to give a pair to you. So I'm going to be running a contest this week. The the way to win the contest is you're just going to, I want you to teach people how to do a frog stand. Whoever teaches the most people how to do a frog stand and tags me in those videos, whoever does the most, I'm going to send you a pair of handmade parallettes made by me. Um, you can't get these anywhere else. They're two inch wide fat parallettes, and I'm going to ship them out to you. Whoever does them, teaches the most and helps the community the most, I'm going to send you out a pair of parallettes. So here's how I load up into a crow stand. This is really important. So I don't want my knees down on my elbows. The, the higher my knees are in my armpits, the higher my hips are over my shoulders and the easier it is to raise. Now you see there how my, my legs are loose and they're kind of flopping around. That, that would force me to raise up with a very wide body arc and that will take a lot more strength. So what, I see, what you see me do here is I pull my heels into my butt and then my hips just shoot up in the air. The tighter your body the smaller the arc and the less strength that it takes to, ro to raise up and rise up into the handstand. All right, so here, again, I get up on the balls of my feet, I bend my elbows, and I put my knees as high up onto my triceps as possible. Then I pull my heels into my butt, and then I kind of just raise my legs into a straight line. It's important to go as slowly as possible. The higher your hips are, the easier it is to go up into the handstand. So just get up on the balls of your feet. Watch my feet. I lift up, and then I bend my elbows, and I bring my armpits to my knees. It's really important. It's also very important when doing this that the pits of your elbows are facing forward and that your, elbow, and your elbows are bending straight backwards. You never want your elbows bending out wide and to the side. Your elbows must always bend directly backwards. Very, very important. So now I'm going to be using a ball as a spotter. So here I'll be using the uh, wall ball, and then in the next uh, frame I'll be using a slam ball just to increase the range of motion. I cannot stress this enough. The more time you spend mastering the crow stand, and the bent arm handstand. Spend time in these positions. The more time you spend mastering it, the easier the handstand will be, the quicker you will get your handstand, and most importantly, the stronger and more able you will be to do a handstand push-up right away. There's so much more balance and strength that goes into these positions, and really what it takes is just spending a little bit of time there and connecting your brain to the motor units and your muscles. These are such foreign positions, and they get drastically overlooked. Just spend a little bit of time there, and I can't, I can't stress, at first it will seem insurmountable, like it will just take too much strength, and then literally by the next day or two later, it'll feel like, oh, wow, this is actually not as bad as I thought. Really, all it is is just your brain connecting to your muscles and innervating more muscle fiber and allowing you to move easier in and out of these positions. Spend as much time as humanly possible in the crow stand and the bent arm handstand. If you do that, I promise you, you will get your handstand so fast and you will almost immediately have the stability and balance to do handstand push-ups. That is the key. Bent arm handstand and crow stand. Spend a ton of time there. It will it will pay you dividends. Now I'm just going to show you. Uh, this is just combining the hollow body leg lift. I taught those uh, like a month or so ago in a progression. If you need to learn them, just go back to the progression. It's on my page. And now I'm just combining them with a modified Zanetti press. So what I'm doing here is I'm using very light dumbbells. I have my elbows locked out. And it's not a true Zanetti press because I'm not going up with my uh, palms turned out, you know, palms facing the ceiling like a ring turned out position. I'm doing a little bit of a rotation and bringing the dumbbells together just because it feels amazing on my shoulders. And it's, I'm just doing it more as a therapeutic 
therapeutic mobility exercise. It's very important to spend a lot of time in the hollow body position in order to have the strength and balance in a handstand and you know the bent arm handstand and all the transitions. Now, if you are more advanced and you've already gotten the handstand, here's how I load in and set up uh, for the uneven handstand. So I'm using a box. I like to use the bar, bar end. Uh, this is like a nice hybrid between a human flag and a handstand. Now, you see I lock my elbow and I turn my shoulder down and then I want the elbow of the parallel hand, excuse me, the shoulder of the parallel hand to be just outside of my, of my knuckles. So I like the palm of my hand to kind of line up with the inside of my armpit. So that's how, that's what I do. I just turn a little towards the hand and, and just pop up. I love you guys. Thank you so much. I'm going to shut up now because I'll be speaking on the other video. All right. So the key is you have to put your elbow in between your legs right here like this. So you want to go in here and, and lock it in. Where you are, that's a modified crow stand, and that's also too low. It will help hurt your elbow. So put your elbow in between so it locks into place like that. And the way that you load up to it is you're going to put, put your elbows like this. You bring your heels together like this, and then you all you do is you lean forward and then up onto your tippy toes like this, and then you bring your toes together as you start floating like that. All right, so there's very little movement. It all involves going up onto your tippy toes like a ballerina until, you're, until you're, uh, your forearms are vertical. So again, it's like this. I come up onto my toes and I just bring my feet together like that in order to float. So put your elbows in the crease of your legs and just go right up onto the points of your toes. I hope that helps. Okay, so the handstand video on how to press your way into a handstand so you get your handstand and your handstand push up at the same time. I just want to make things a little easier for you guys, especially if you're training at home, you don't have access to a spotter, or maybe you're a little nervous about pressing your way up into a handstand, or even just trying out things like the frog or the crow stand at first. So even if you're brand new to the frog or crow stand, this is an excellent way, and then I'll show you how it applies to the handstand push-up. So let's say you're afraid to do a frog stand because you're, oh no, I might collapse, I might fall forward. So if you want a spotter and you don't have one, you can go up close to a couch. You can go up close to anything soft. You can go do it next to your bed. I'm going to show you how to use the wall or bed or couch as a spotter. So what I'm going to do is, all these balances, I'm going to load onto them and make sure that my forearm is vertical. So I don't want to, if my forearm's down here when I start the, cro the frog stand, I'm just always going to fall backwards. So the key is, once my arms are in my legs, I'm always going to initiate the balance aspect. See how my forearms are vertical now? Once my forearms are vertical, it's very easy to balance. And the way I'm going to use the wall, couch, bed, whatever as a spotter, for the handstand, obviously it's going to require the wall, because, but that's next. So anyway, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to set it up so that when my forearms are vertical, I have space here. So like, if I'm here and I try to load into a frog stand, see I'm too close, my head hits the wall. I can't get up, so I'm going to go back, load my arms into my legs, I lean forward to see, oh, my head hit the wall before my feet came off the ground. So I come back a little, I lean forward. Oh, this time my head came, my head didn't hit the wall and my feet are off the ground. Now if I fall, boom, doesn't matter. See what I mean? So you can use this if, if, if you only have a wall, just put a pillow there so your head doesn't smack into the wall. Now how do we do this for a handstand to, to gain your confidence for the pressing aspect? So we already know that I'm in a good distance for a frog stand. I can support myself, my arms are vertical and I can float. And I'm close enough to the wall. So if I wanna go up into a push-up, I'll use a crow stand for this, I come up. Okay, I'm here, I go, I bend, I lift my body, I come up, and let's say I lose my balance. Whoops, my feet are right there. It's not an issue, okay? You can work your push-ups from here, just come down. That'll help build your negative strength while one foot traces the wall. Always make sure you keep at least one foot balanced over your hips so you can start learning the balance aspect of this. So I think it's way better to use this hybrid variation where you use the wall as a spotter as opposed to sliding your feet up and down the wall and always leaning against the wall because you'll miss out on so much of the balance aspect of the handstand. So thank you. I hope this is valuable.